What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome into the All-22 Review, driven by AAA. I'm Fran Duffy. The Eagles fall to the Seattle Seahawks at home here, 17-10. to Tough loss on offense. You know, obviously, they could not get much going against the Seahawks defense. Five turnovers, very, very tough to overcome. But we're not going to look on the offense today. We're going to break that down this week on the Eagle on the Sky podcast. We're going to instead look at this defensive effort because it was a really fun day for this defense. Six sacks total, a couple of turnovers, really, really impressive outing from Jim Schwartz's unit. And it started really on the opening drive with this three and out. Here's what you're going to see. Along the line of scrimmage, you're going to have five Eagles defenders five over five, what's commonly known as a diamond front here across the NFL. And you're going to see what that does is it just creates a series of one-on-one -on -one matchups because the offensive line, they don't know who's coming, who's going, who's dropping out. So you have to account for everybody, which means that all five offensive linemen, they're going to be occupied by five blockers. Now, the fifth blocker along this defensive front is Nigel Bradham. He's the fifth rusher. So he's not actually going to blitz. He's going to step forward and take on the left guard. He is essentially just going to drop back and just be a spy on Russell Wilson. So your four rushers here are going to be Derek Barnett off the edge, Fletcher Cox lined up one-on-one -on -one with the center, Brandon Graham lined up inside, and Josh Sweat coming off the edge. But like I said, this guard, he doesn't know that Nigel Bradham's not coming, so he has to treat him as if he's going to blitz. So we're going to let this run, and you're going to see exactly what happens here is really, again, five one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board, and the most pivotal one is this one right here. Fletcher Cox lined up on the backup center. Joey Hunt is just going to bench press him into the backfield right into the lap of Russell Wilson. You've got tight man-to-man -man coverage across the board as well in the secondary. He's got nowhere to go with the football, and Fletcher gets home for the sack. Really good job here by this defensive staff and the front seven of getting home to Russell Wilson and getting off the field for a three and out to start the game. Let's fast forward now to a little bit later in the second quarter, and the Eagles do a great job again of getting to Russell Wilson, this time on a little bit of a play-action pass. We're going to see here they're in prime shot play territory. Anytime the Seahawks are inside the 40-yard lines in between this area, they're trying to attack down the field. So on second down, even though they're in shotgun, this isn't quite a shot play look. The Eagles are ready on the back end from a coverage standpoint. You see Rodney McLeod here. He's shaded over this side. He's going to provide help to his defensive backs here off play action. Russell Wilson's hoping that he's going to have one of these guys on a crosser, and if not, he's got a vertical route here on the outside. He's waiting for these routes to develop, but the Eagles do a great job in coverage. We'll let this run. You're going to see the ball snap. I want you to keep an eye on Malcolm Jenkins here at the bottom of the screen because he initially looks like he's playing some kind of a contain role here, potentially playing as a flat defender. But once he sees that Russell Wilson is not looking to break the pocket, he now takes off and he's going to come off the edge here. A run around the running back. Coverage is tight on the back end. You see all these guys have eyes on these receivers. You've got Rodney McLeod here in the post. Ronald Darby still is in phase here with his receiver on the outside. Now comes Jenkins off the edge, and we'll let this run, and you're going to see that the veteran safety gets home for the sack. Wilson doesn't see him until it's too late. The coverage was tight on the back end. Good decision by Jenkins to pull the trigger there on the blitz, and the Eagles force a third and long. All right, so on that third down play, the Eagles defense comes up with yet another sack, the fourth and final sack of the first half. This one by another safety, Rodney McLeod, who starts this play right here. But he's actually, all he's going to do is he's going to be playing as a curl player underneath. So we're going to see exactly how this comes to be. And really what you're going to see on third and long is that the Seahawks are trying to attack the field here with a two-man route concept. Really, Russell Wilson is hoping to hit this receiver, the number two receiver, on a deep outbreaking route. But... The Eagles are playing a coverage that's called inverted cover two. So you're going to get Ronald Darby dropping into the deep half. You're going to get Jalen Mills dropping into the deep half. Epps, Marcus Epps, who they just signed off waivers from Minnesota, he's going to drop into the deep middle. The big defender I want you to watch here on this play is Avante Maddox. As he's going to drop here into the curl flat area, and he does a great job of sinking to take away this throw from Russell Wilson. Now what you're going to see here is up front, You've got another diamond front. Remember that first play we showed you off that first third down? A diamond front here from the Eagles where you've got Nigel Bradham up on the line of scrimmage. Here's Malcolm Jenkins. He's going to serve as a spy to shadow Russell Wilson. Now we're going to let this run. And I want you to see exactly what the quarterback sees here as he takes the snap. He drops back. 
and now the coverage has really declared itself, right? Again, you've got your two deep safeties. Here's one underneath defender. That's Avante Maddox. He does a great job of helping to take away this throw. You've got another safety in the middle of the field. Three more underneath defenders. The guy who ends up getting this sack is right here, Rodney McLeod. He sees it. He's got no passing threats here. Everybody's running away. You've got a running back staying in protection. There's nobody threatening him here. So once Russell Wilson looks downfield and sees that these throws are taken away from him, now he's going to try and break the pocket. And that's where Rodney McLeod says, you know what? I'm going to trigger downhill and take this sack away. So the rush gets home. The coverage was really tight. You're going to see that Josh Sweat gets the pressure, forces Russell Wilson off his spot. Here comes McLeod from the bottom of the screen, and he's able to get Wilson to the ground. It's a zero-yard game, but a sack really that started with great coverage down the field. The Eagles very disciplined in this zone coverage, take away the throws that Wilson wants downfield, and the Eagles get off the field here on third and long. All right, so earlier I talked about that inverted cover two coverage that the Eagles ran on that Rodney McLeod sack. Well, they actually ran the same coverage on a Rodney McLeod interception in the third quarter. And I want to show you exactly how this play came to be. You're going to see that the Eagles are in dime coverage right now, okay, because you've got six defensive backs. One, two, three, four, five, and then here's Malcolm Jenkins is six. So you've got six defensive backs on the field. Three corners, three safeties. Your third safety is Marcus Epps. Again, the player that the Eagles signed off waivers from the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this coverage is going to be called inverted cover two because typically when you play cover two, all right, you've got two high safeties. So in this case, you would think that this would be, you know, maybe Rodney McLeod or maybe Marcus Epps. But with an inverted two, these two high players are not safeties. They are instead corners. So you're going to get corners who are lined up here on the outside before the snap. They're going to get a little, they're going to expand inside a little bit and they're going to play as the two high players. Now, this leaves you with four or five underneath defenders, depending on what you're doing from a pressure standpoint. So in this case, you're going to see five underneath defenders. You're going to get Nigel Bradham dropping out. You're going to get Rodney McLeod going to the curl flat area. You've got Marcus Epps staying right where he's at, right in the middle of the field. He's kind of that Tampa 2 middle linebacker. You've got Avante Maddox, and you've got Malcolm Jenkins. So all these guys are all going to drop out. And again, ultimately, what you're going to have is two deep defenders, one middle of the field, and then you're going to have four underneath. So this is a Tampa 2 coverage, all right? So your big weaknesses are going to be in the deep middle of the field, so those deep posts. We've seen the Eagles give up some plays down the middle of the field where the, the opponent has dialed up perfect play calls against this coverage, or in what I call the turkey hole. That area is aptly named because of Thanksgiving coming this week. The turkey hole, which is that area between the high defender and the curl defender. So. These areas are the weak points of the coverage, and the Seahawks are actually going to attack one of those weak areas because they're going to take the receiver here on the outside and run a little fade. Russell Wilson is hoping to hit him right in this area. Again, the turkey hole in this coverage. So we're going to let this play. Russell Wilson's going to take the snap, and I want you to see exactly how this play comes out because this was a great play by Ronald Darby in this coverage. Again, here's the turkey hole. Here's the area that Russell Wilson wants to attack in this cover two. You've got Rodney McLeod underneath. You've got Ronald Darby sinking as a high defender. He's going to do a great job, Darby, of recognizing what's coming, putting his foot in the ground, and attacking this catch point and impacting the ball. That pops the ball up. We can let this run. And Rodney McLeod does a great job as well of sinking, getting depth, making sure that he's in position now to come away with the interception. So the Eagles did a great job of playing within the construct of the coverage. Everybody followed the rules. Ronald Darby makes a great break on the ball, and Rodney McLeod comes up with the interception. Great job by this defense overall. It wasn't just pressure in this game. They did a great job on the back end as well. All right, let's go to a little bit later now. A sack from Malcolm Jenkins, his second on the day. And this really was a really good coverage sack from this Eagles defense. They're playing straight man coverage because what you're going to see here from Seattle, they come out in a heavy set where you've got extra offensive linemen on the field. You've got a couple tight ends out there. You've got only two receivers that are going to go out in this route. This is a max protection two-man route concept, a double post where they're going to try and attack the deep middle of the field. 
The Eagles are in man-to-man -man coverage. So you've got Ronald Darby matched up one-on-one -on -one here. You've got Jalen Mills matched up one-on-one -on -one here with a single high safety in Rodney McLeod in the deep middle of the field. The first thing I want to point out is the connection between McLeod and Mills because they do a great job of passing this deep post off where you're going to see Mills later on in this play as he sees that this post route is going to go towards the middle of the field, he knows he has to help out Darby because he has an idea. You know what? Out of this set, they're probably going to try and send this guy outside and attack the deep middle of the field. Get McLeod to step up. Well, he has to now replace. Jalen Mills has to get to the post, take away this throw. Do not let Russell Wilson attack over the top. So great pass off from number 31, Jalen Mills. But those are not the only two guys that are in man-to-man -man coverage on this play. So what you're also going to see is Nigel Bradham. He's manned up on the running back in the backfield. You're going to have Nate Gary. He's manned up on the extra offensive lineman who's in as a tight end. So he's manned up on him as an eligible receiver. He has an idea. You know what? He's probably not releasing onto the route. I'm going to blitz. The other guy, though, is Malcolm Jenkins. He's lined up right here, matched up one-on-one -on -one with this tight end. He can't get too aggressive and blitz right away because if he releases out, now Malcolm Jenkins is giving up a big play. So Malcolm Jenkins has to wait. He's got to be patient. If this receiver is staying in the block, then he can green dog. He can get after the quarterback, insert into the pressure. We're going to let this play run really quickly and freeze it again. And you can see, he sees that this tight end is staying in, in protection. He says, you know what? Forget this, I'm taking off. I'm gonna insert into the pressure and become a part of the blitz. And he does a great job of getting home. So Malcolm Jenkins is gonna turn this corner. He's gonna be the one that ends up getting home. But I want you to watch Russell Wilson. He does not like what he sees here because Jalen Mills passes off that post route from Tyler Lockett. He's gonna help out Ronald Darby and make sure that he gets underneath, essentially double teaming that outside receiver. We'll let this play out. And you can see the job that the secondary does. Russell Wilson does not like what he sees. He has to hold on to the football. That gives Malcolm Jenkins time to be able to get home for a sack. Full team effort. You need your coverage, you need your rush. Eagles got both on that play. All right, let's take a look at the sixth and final sack of the day for this Eagles defense. This is a really fun breakdown, and I know this was an Eagles loss. The defense was outstanding. The offense struggled. But this was a really fun kind of a chess match here between the offensive line and the defensive line. And I'm going to try and give you the best look as to why it's exactly that. All right, we've talked a couple times here in this breakdown about the diamond front, right, where you've got five defenders across the width of the defensive line and how what that means for an offensive line is they have to account for all of these guys in protection. They're the five most dangerous. They're the five closest to the quarterback. These five linemen have to account. But what have we seen in those other plays that we've done? Nigel Bradham, he has not rushed. He's been able to drop out. Maybe he's spying Russell Wilson. Maybe he's playing man-to-man -man against the running back out of the backfield. He has not blitzed yet. So the Seahawks, you could see before this snap, before uh, this freeze point, actually, the left guard for Seattle, he was turning and looking at Russell Wilson, and they were kind of talking through protection because he's, the, the left guard is checking. Hey, do you want me to block this guy? He's standing right in front of me. Do you want me to block him? Or should we worry about what we've got on the right side of this pressure? Because look, you've got Fletcher Cox right here. You've got Vinnie Curry. You've got Brandon Graham. That sends alarm bells off for the offensive line that, you know what, there might be some kind of a stunt, some kind of a twist. We've seen this from the Eagles on film where they're going to try and just use this guy as a decoy, keep this guard's eyes here so that he can't help with any kind of a twist that you're running here. We've seen this over the last few weeks from this Eagles defense. So what do the Seahawks do? How are they going to combat this thinking that Nigel Bradham might be a decoy? They're just going to slide the protection, go a four-man slide that way. So you've got the offensive tackle sliding out, you've got the right guard, you've got the center, and the left guard all blocking. So technically, it's four versus three, right? You've got the three defensive ends, or the three defensive linemen going up against the four offensive linemen. This tackle is going to block Derek Barnett, Who's going to block Nigel Bradham? That's going to be on Rashad Penny. The running back is going to account for him one-on-one. -on -one. Now, you would think that would make sense. That would, if Nigel Bradham's going to drop out, you don't feel that threatened. But what happens? We're going to let this run. The ball snap. Nigel Bradham blitzes. He comes after Russell Wilson. So that means Rashad Penny has to step up. Who inserts into the pressure? 
Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm Jenkins was one-on-one -on -one against the running back. Once he sees that Penny steps up and he has to block Nigel Bradham, Malcolm Jenkins is going to fly inside. He's going to replace Nigel Bradham in the rush because now the offense doesn't have enough bodies to account for how many rushers the Eagles are sending. That's one of the beauties of playing press man, aggressive press man coverage, is that when you have smart, savvy players at the second level who can diagnose and get downhill quickly, they can become part of the rush. So Malcolm Jenkins, he's actually going to come clean and he's going to get part of the sack. The other part of it, though, is actually going to be on the defensive line. This was a perfect freeze by our producer, Robbie, here in the control room because you can see that this stunt by the Eagles is already getting ready to be set up. Vinnie Curry, who's been so good at running all kinds of stunts throughout the course of his career here in Philadelphia, does a great job as a pinner on this play. Yes, they are sliding protection that way, so he is just going to try and explode into the backfield, really just knock this right tackle off of his pass set. Vinny Curry gets out of his stance so quickly that the guard has to really kind of throw himself off balance to make sure that he gets a piece of him. Look at this alley here that's created for Brandon Graham, who's going to just step inside and loop right into this alley because you've got Fletcher Cox, who's occupying two blockers on the inside. So Vinny Curry explodes upfield. Brandon Graham is going to come in. This is a TE stunt. He's going to come in clean, and he's going to combine with Malcolm Jenkins here for the sack of Russell Wilson. So this is a cumulative effort. This is something that has been built up throughout the course of the game. All game, Nigel Bradham lined up on the line of scrimmage and dropped out. The Seahawks accounted for that by saying, all right, we're going to slide our protection towards Fletcher Cox and that side of the line. Bradham comes in clean. The running back steps up. Malcolm replaces. Brandon Graham and Vinnie Curry defeat the slide on the opposite side. Both BG and Malcolm Jenkins get home for the sack. Really fun chess match there between the Eagles defensive front and the Seahawks offensive line. Unfortunately, the defensive effort alone was not enough to win this game for the Eagles as they fall 17 to 10 to the Seahawks at home. Their second straight loss for the Eagles who had put together a win streak going into the bye. They've now lost two straight. So what happens now? You got to go down on the road to Miami, a team that's been playing hard. We're going to break down this matchup this week, not only on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast fueled by Gatorade, but also on Eagles game plan presented by Toyota. So make sure you are tuned into all of our X's and O's content. The Eagles now entering a critical stretch of the schedule where they've got to start stacking some wins up to get into the postseason. We'll be breaking it all down this week on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. Thank you for joining us once again on the All-22 Review driven by AAA.